We often don't think that maths is a place in music, but if we observe some chord progressions, specifically autumn leaves that we covered in a previous video, the Eric Clapton version, we can take the chords like B minor to E minor 7, A7 to D major 7, and um, we can analyze the sequence of it and we'll find something quite interesting, which is quite, quite cool, I thought. I found that the mathematics was quite interesting. So I'm going to share this more as an observation and you can take from it whatever you get. And you can use the concept for your own sort of creativity and your own compositional skills as well, because concepts are always cool to have. If you want to try and create a certain feel, understand what the composer did, whether it was subconscious or intentional, we're not really sure, but it's nice to understand why things work, how they possibly could have been derived that, and then we can create things from there. Now, we also played three in the video as well. We took B minor, for example, and we took a scale to the E minor 7 and then to A7, and we used that scale to join the chords together, but we're not going to go into that now. We're going to quickly revise the chords though, and we're going to, first of all, before we start it, get to know the key. The key for this study that we're doing is D major. So it's the D major scale. I'm going to focus more on the fretting hand here. There's my D, fret number 10, and your D major scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, over 1 octave. Obviously, I can take it further. I could play D major down here. Like the jazz guitarist to it and then we can play it over here um, all different places we don't want to get into that right now we want to look at the maths behind the chords which again i found quite interesting let's look at the chord b minor the opening chord b minor the relative minor of d major so d major the key has got a relative minor of b minor and the chord b minor is going to be you can hear that was the b minor scale you can hear the scale complementing the chord quite nicely. Now, let's take the B minor and count up four notes. Now, maybe get a pen and pencil, pause the video quickly, get a pen and pencil, write this down. Write down B and then up four notes. One, two, three, four. Now, I'm assuming you do know your B minor scale. You can see me playing it there. You should know that. Okay. Right, one more time. From B, four notes, one, two, three, four, right down E. Okay, we got that. Now we're going to stay in the key of B minor, which is essentially also D major because they contain the same notes. We're not talking melodic minors or monic minors, we're talking natural minors. So they contain the same notes. It's just starting on a different position within the scale. Okay, so you're starting at E and we're counting up four notes. One, two, three, four, right down A. So your first note you wrote down was B, your second note, 1, 2, 3, 4, was E, your fourth note from E, 1, 2, 3, 4, was A, and now you're going to go up 4 again, 1, 2, 3, 4, that is D. From D you count, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you got G, and I didn't have to play it there, I could have played my G from anywhere, I could have played it from here, for example, at the same result, um, because obviously you're just different octaves. But every time we go up four, we're going to see an interesting thing happen. Now, so far from the top, just to rewind, we went B, one, two, three, four to E, one, two, three, four to A, one, two, three, four to D, one, two, three, four to G. And from G, we're going to count one, two, three, four, C sharp. Now, I'm running out of notes here, so I'm going to kick to the lower octave over here and continue one, two, three, four. And hey, there's F sharp. And if we finish that, one, two, three, four, back to B. So here's the maths for this one. And this is just an observation. I don't necessarily think the composer intentionally said, well, hmm, I'm going to go up four notes from each chord and make a chord progression for it. But maybe they did, and you heal that. Okay. But interestingly enough, those notes that you've got written down are actually the notes for each chord the beginning, the root note of each chord as it's being played in the sequence. So when you had B, it was B minor. When you went to the E, it was an E minor 7. When you went to the A, it was an A7. When you went to the D, it was a D major 7. So those, every fourth note is the root note 
of every chord in the same sequence as being played. G major 7, C sharp minor 7 flat 5, and then F sharp 7. Okay, I played it differently on the other video. Same chord and back to B minor. So here's something just interesting. I just want us to realize these things sometimes. Um, if you're sitting and you want to compose and you think, well, gee, I've got nothing, nothing creative happening, try some maths. Try and say, well, mm, I wonder what happens if I write a chord sequence and I go and start in every third note. Or if I go up five notes and then go up two notes and then five notes and two notes. Try some patterns. See what it sounds like. We will never know what the original composer was thinking when he put these chords together. But we do know that he got a very cool song, a very, very awesome chord structure. And it's in the key of C, sorry, key of D, same as B minor. We know all those informations, and we've learned to song and observe something interesting with the fourths. Just so, by the way, when we go up four, it's the same as going back five, so there is a relationship to the circular fist to this two, but that's a video for a different day. So I hope you found this interesting, just more of an observation and a lesson as such. And uh, yeah, if you haven't watched the awesome news video I've done, have a look at it. You will see that I've used the Phrygian scale, and lots of guys will say, but why the Phrygian scale? You're playing at a B, why don't you use the A holy and it's a minor tonality? And yes, they are correct, but the F sharp Phrygian scale has all the same notes anyway. And if I start with B minor, I'm not going to use my first few notes. I want to use all six strings all the time, so I don't want to sell myself short on my guitar. So I would rather learn all my modes starting on the sixth string, know how they relate to each other, be aware of tonalities, I'm not arguing tonalities are silly or anything like that, they're very, very important. Um, but in essence, when I'm improvising, if I'm busy playing a scale and I'm going... I don't think what notes I'm playing, and I intentionally played a bit more quicker there just to show the idea. I didn't think, well, I'm playing a D major seventh chord, so I'm starting an I only do have a... All that theory starts tying it down. What I am thinking is, well, I've got my Phrygian scale, shape, underline the word shape, not tonality. I'm using the shape to provide me with the notes. And I've got all the notes in the key of D from this mode because it's the third position of the mode. And therefore, I can solo. And I don't have to worry about anything really specific I can actually enjoy the moment of just simply playing guitar and not getting too tied up in unnecessary theoretical knowledge which is very very interesting because I just did a video on <laughs> going up books but it's nice to understand that things work as well and get a bit of backdrop of it and see mathematics okay I hope you had fun just watching this and uh, have a good day thank you